folks and welcome to another helping of Mr H's Art Pot. You join me today in my own kitchen where I'm going to make for you a hot pot. Now before I go any further with this I know one or two of you are going to traditionalists are going to turn around when I've made it and say that's not an art pot. Art pot has little uh, potatoes on top and lamb shank and all that especially my uh, relatives over in Yorkshire. Well this is my hot pot and for the purposes of this video, we're going to call it Mr. H's Hot Pot. So, first of all, I'll show the ingredients what I'm going to put in to my hot pot. I'm going to have potatoes, carrots, two onions, or you can just put a large onion in, and I've just got two small ones. Garden peas. A corn dog and two tins of stew and steak. Now I'm going to be making this uh, hot pot over two days because the trick is is to make your mixture what's going to go in the hot pot and then let it stand overnight and it uh, it tastes a lot better. So I'll be adding the stew and steak and the peas later on tomorrow because uh, if you put the peas in they'll just fall away to nothing. And we're going to be making our hot pot in this Pyrex dish. So the first thing to do is peel all my bits and pieces, my potatoes, my carrots and fill this nice and level with it with our mixture. So without further ado, I better get peeling haven't I? So join me when I've got all this stuff peeled up and I'm ready to put it in the uh, coop pot. Right welcome back hot potters, that's all the donkey work done, that's all the peeling done. There's a little bit of the old bright eyes when I was uh, chopping up the onions but other than that that's how a mixture made. Now the next job is to put it in this cook pot. Add some hot water, bring it all to the boil then I will add my corn dog, some gravy salt and a little dash of pepper just for that ah, taste. So that's today's work done. You'll have to join me tomorrow where I'll be eating up the stewing steak Eating up the peas, putting that into the mixture, and then I'll make my dough for the pie crust, or hot pot crust. So, join me tomorrow when I'll be doing those next little bits. Hello again folks, and welcome back to day two of the making of Mr H's hot pot stroke pie. Now, as you'll recall, a quick recap from yesterday, I um, put my mixture in a cook pot and I brought it to boil and I let it simmer for about two hours, let all the veg get nice and soft and the juices from the corn dog get into it. I'm now reheating it at the back of me though, it smells lovely, you can't get that through smell of vision on YouTube but it does smell lovely. That's now coming to boil again and I'm gonna bring my peas to boil and then I'm gonna add my two tins of stewing steak which I'll heat up as well. Then the idea is all the mixture will go into the Pyrex dish and I'll make some dough, put that on top, bang it straight in the oven for about 40 minutes or until the pie crust becomes uh, nice and golden and crisp. Then I'll bring it out and allow it to cool. So we're going to move on now with the next stage which is cooking these two ingredients. So I'll crack on with that and then uh, I'll join you again. Right then folks, well I've added my peas to the stock pot and that's now simmering away nicely. The stewing steak as you can just see in front of the cook pot there that's just coming up to temperature now so we're basically ready to add everything into our pie dish. Now what I'll have to do I'll have to strain all the liquid from the cook pot off because obviously you don't just add all the lots otherwise you're going to have a very sloppy wet pie and that's not tasty for anyone is it? But I am going to keep the stock because uh, that'll make a nice soup afterwards, you know, you can add some more vegetables, so nothing's wasted. So I'm going to crack on now and uh, get all this mixture strained off and add everything to our Pyrex dish and then we're ready for the messy bit which is making the dough. So uh, join me when I've added everything into this Pyrex dish. Right then, well I've got all that mixture in my Pyrex dish. There we go, just look at that, steaming away there, looks beautiful. So I'm just going to put that to one side now. Because the next task 
is to make the pastry to go on top. And I'll be making that by using two cups of plain white flour, sieved of course, to get any weevils out or anything like that, not that there's any in it. Um, a little bit of salt, some butter, just to congeal it and make it into a nice dough ball. And then, of course, the most important ingredient, cold water, or corporation pop as my dad used to call it. So I'm going to crack on now and uh, get my dough made, and then I'll be able to roll it out flat, place it on the top of uh, my pie, and fold it in gently, and then basically bang it in the oven. But uh, I'll join you again when I've made a dough ball, shall I? Right folks, well I've got all my ingredients in my dish ready to make the dough. A slight correction to my ingredient portions, I've decided to pour in two and a half cups of flour, simply because I like a nice thick crust on it. So, one thing you must always remember to do is remove your watch before doing this because it gets rather messy. So I'm going to crack on now and uh, start mixing this up. Join me in a bit. I've now got our mixture all nice and crumbly and ready for adding the water. So that'll be the next stage and then obviously once I've got it into a nice dough ball after kneading it and that I can lay it out and flatten it out with my rolling pin. So um, that just gives you an idea of roughly the sort of consistency you're looking for. You just sort of get to know after a while how much butter to put in. I don't really measure it out hard and fast like that so sometimes it's a little bit more buttery than others. Hopefully I've managed to get it first time. Right folks, if you've got your mixture for your dough right, you should end up with something that resembles this. A nice ball of dough, which you can knead and as you can see, it doesn't stick to your hand. Now you can add a bit of more flour if you think it's a bit sloppy. If you've got yourself into a total mess, well there's not much I can do about that is there? I'm not bloody Jamie Oliver when all's said and done. But uh, my dough is looking great. So what I'm going to do with it now is I'm going to place it down on a floured surface and I'm going to roll it out and get it ready to place on top of that pie. All coming together now, isn't it? See, a lot of you out there folks, you didn't know as I could do this. I'm a man of many talents, me. I don't just build sheds and brick lay. I can do anything, me, within reason. Right then, let's get this dough uh, rolled out, shall we? Now it's very important that what you do is you wipe down your work surface first to make sure it's nice and clean and dry. Hygiene is very important in the kitchen, as uh, many of you know. Right, I think this, uh, this dough's just about needed. So I'm now going to roll this uh, dough out. I flow in my rolling pin, ready, and away I go. Now one thing that's important is obviously you need to make it so it'll fall nicely over the side of the Pyrex dish. So in your mind's eye, get a rough idea of roughly what size you've rolled your pastry out to. And then just bring your dish over and just place it over the top, hovering of course, don't place it on it, and that'll give you a rough idea. And, hey presto, we have one pie, ready to go in the oven. Now what I've already done, I've already put some little ventilation holes in, I just put about nine and it just makes it look a bit decorative as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick it in the oven for about 40 minutes or until I start seeing the, you know, the pastry go nice crisp and uh, it's been cooked. And that'll tell me it's cooked through basically. So I'll put it in about 140, 160. Unfortunately I don't have a gas oven so you'll have to do your own conversion on that one. So join me in a bit for the finished product. As they say, the proof in the pudding is in the eating, or in this case, the pie. Well folks, the pie's now in the oven. It's going to be cooking. All that's left for me to do is clean up this mess in the kitchen. And hope Mrs H doesn't get back before I've cleaned it up. Well folks, it's time to take a look at that pie. Let's see how it's turned out, shall we? I'm hoping it's turned out okay. Well, there we go, I've just got it out of the oven. And hopefully, it tastes as good as it looks. I'm just going to leave it there to cool now. And uh, we'll be tucking in later and I'm going to have some of that for my tea, along with Mrs H. There we go folks, that's how you make an hot pot. Or a Wigan hot pot. I know it's not an hot pot in the traditional sense, so please don't start commenting below saying you know it should have lamb shank in it, it should have little potatoes on top, I know all that. But I'm calling Mr H's hot pot you see, so I can't call it Mr H's pie, can I? Anyway, there we have it, and like I said we're going to tuck in later, so until the next time, bye bye for now.